But when we say waste, what are we wasting? Uh, what are we talking about uh, in the flower business and in florist shops? So I wanted to offer a maybe broader perspective that can help frame the conversation today. When we think of sustainability and we think of waste in the flower business as we were preparing for this morning, uh, one of the biggest sustainability issues we think in the industry really is how do we reduce flower waste? We think that one of the biggest sustainability issues in the industry today is the waste of flowers, flowers being lost in the distribution channel and the amount of water that the industry uses and then ends up disposing of. And the reason for that is because of the input, high input, inputs that go into producing a stem of flowers. There are some estimates that as high as 15 to 20% of all stems are thrown away before consumers can enjoy them. Uh, so that's a, that's a big problem. And what can we do about that? So one of the things, there are many things we can do, but this morning what we wanted to focus on are uh, actions that flower shops can take and other people uh, in the floral industry specifically. Uh, and one of those actions that we can all take is to practice good post-harvest uh, techniques or best practices that will help to reduce the waste uh, of flower stems by minimizing the amount of premature death in flowers or unnecessary death in flowers and techniques that we can use to help conserve or reduce the amount of water that we're using. And waste reduction in this sense will help in all three pillars of the three pillars of sustainability, we think, uh, meaning people, planet, and profit. So I, I just want to direct your attention a bit to that chart uh, on the bottom. Uh, this is our estimate uh, of how much waste we think might really be happening in the floral industry today. And we looked at it in terms of for every billion stems that are produced uh, at grower level, we think that growers, a reasonable number would be for all stems produced at grower level, about 2% of those stems are probably uh, end up uh, in a uh, mulching pile or uh, disposed of at the farm. It never actually, it gets harvested, but it never actually leaves the farm. In distribution from the growing area to the marketplace, we think about 3% is a reasonable estimate of the number of stems that never really make it. And at retail, we've talking to many retailers, both supermarkets, retail florists, and others, we've heard numbers that are around 15% of all stems never actually make it to the consumer because in the processing handling, uh, in the design process, you end up losing about 15% of those stems. And we did some quick math. So when you look at for every billion stems, after you do the math, in the end, it's about almost 200 million stems or 19% of all stems produced would not make it to the final consumer, which seems like a number, it's an opportunity. It's a number that the industry can work on reducing because that's a lot of stems. So I did some checking and in the calendar year 2020, just in the United States, uh, we imported about 1.2 billion stems. Um, uh, I'm sorry, we imported about 6.3 billion stems of cut flowers. So if you use that 19% estimate, that comes to about 1.2 billion stems, billion with a B, uh, of stems that theoretically never made it, were harvested and shipped by the farm, but never made it uh, to the consumer. So even if our estimates are off, even it, if it was half that number, it's a huge number of stems. And that I wanted to go over this because I think it can frame our conversation for today. 
So flower waste reduction, particularly at the retail florist level, what can you do or what are the reasons and what can you do about it? So there are many reasons for the premature death of flowers uh, or, or for the waste of flowers at a retail floral shop. One is they die too quickly or unnecessarily. It could be unsold product. It could be disease. Uh, it could be that it was a wrong purchase. You bought the wrong item and now you're stuck with it and not sure what to do or how to move it. It ends up being disposed of. It could be customers returning product to you for a variety of reasons. There could be many reasons. And to kind of drill down a little bit further, uh, a bunch of roses comes uh, with 25 stems in it as a standard from the grower. And if the number that at retail, we're saying about 15% do not end up actually going to the consumer, that comes to about three to four stems uh, of that per bunch. And if you think about your entire career as a retail florist or as a floral designer, and all the bunches of roses that you've handled, does three to four stems seem like a reasonable number? Um, and then when you add in carnations, chrysanthemums, all the other stems, I don't think we're that far off in terms of uh, stems that get lost uh, in the overall process. So how do we reduce waste uh, inside the flower shop? Well, obviously the most significant thing we can do is probably extend the life of cut flowers or reduce that premature death and in, do things that we can to improve the quality of the flowers so that more of the flowers actually make it out the door to the consumer. And one of the key ways or strategies of doing that would be to practice, uh, have good care and handling practices in your shop. And we'll get into that more. When it comes to water savings, um, water, fresh water is one of the planet's uh, most limited natural resources, which is really su uh, surprising when I first heard this. Three, only 3% 3 of all water on the planet is fresh water is the number that I read. Uh, the rest is salt water. And of that 3%, uh, less than that number, about half that number or less than half of that 3% is actually accessible because the 3% would include Antarctica, all of the glaciers, etc. So the whole planet, all living things need to survive on less than 3% of all the water on the planet. So it's a very important resource, obviously. So how do we reduce our impact as an industry and as individual retail florists on the use of fresh water? How do we use it with that in mind and in a responsible way? Well, obviously you only want to use what you need so you don't want to overfill buckets, and we'll get into that more. And you want to try to extend the use of the water that you actually are putting into the buckets in your shop or the basis in your shop, and we'll get into that a bit more. So the way I, for today's presentation, because we don't have a lot of time, I broke out three things that I think are the most important things that any retail florist can do as strategies to reduce their impact on the planet uh, and reduce that flower stem wastage and the waste of fresh water. The first one is keep your flowers cold. And we'll get into that in more detail. I'll explain why. The second thing we can do is keep everything that will be around the flowers and touching the flowers clean. And I'll explain that further. And the third thing is proper care of the flowers so that we can reduce uh, the other elements of premature death, et cetera. So three C's, keep them cold, keep them clean and care for them. And we'll get into each one. The first one is cold. You may or may not have heard or know, but the number one influence ultimately on flower uh, vase life is temperature. And you can think of this in this way. Uh, every flower has only a finite number of breaths that it can take. Uh, and the, this process is really, I'm talking about, uh, I'm simplifying the process of respiration. So in order to 
slow down the, the number of breaths each stem will take. Temperature is a very important factor, the most important factor. The proper storage temperature for cut flowers uh, in Fahrenheit is between 34 and 38 degrees. So if you are using a cooler, uh, you should have it set at, in that range. That's the optimum. And uh, in Europe and other places in the world, we're talking about one to three C approximately. Uh, the exception would be anything that is a tropical flower. Uh, for those, uh, you would want to set your coolers at 55 to 60 degrees or temperatures, which is about 12 to 15 and a half C. And then you want to keep the relative humidity in the cooler between 75 and 85 percent. That would be the target range. So you want to, the whole idea is to reduce the temperature that the flowers are being exposed to, but not below freezing. Uh, below freezing uh, would, uh, is going to damage the flowers. So keep them cold, but not below freezing. You also want to keep the flowers as dry as possible. I won't really, there's, no, there's not enough time to really get into that aspect, but just know that it reduces the amount of disease that you can have on your flowers that develop on your flowers if you keep them drier. Uh, and a little pro tip, if you're, as you try to manage your coolers, uh, put a bucket of water uh, in the cooler, let it sit there for 24 hours so that the water temperature in that bucket stabilizes to the temperature in your cooler. And then every morning when you come to the shop, check the temperature of that water in that test bucket that's in there. And what will happen is it will give you a better idea, a more accurate idea of the actual average temperature in your cooler. And then you can compare that reading to the 34 to 38 degrees or one to three C or in your tropical cooler, the 55 to 60 or the 12 to 15 C. Uh, and the reason for that is every time you open your cooler door, as the air exchanges from the outside room temperature to the cooler temperature, the temperature fluctuates a lot. And the, temp and the temperature probe in your cooler is measuring the air temperature, but the flowers are gonna experience the average temperature or the temperature of the water. So it's a better indicator for you. Just briefly to show you the impact of temperature, these flowers uh, were done in a university study and they were stored for five days at the temperatures that you see here. Then they were taken out, at, placed at room temperature in a flower food solution, and they were exposed to room temperature from one to four days. You can see that the ones that were stored at the lower temperatures lasted or performed much better, had much better quality than the ones that were stored at the higher temperatures, which kind of proves the point that temperature management is a very, very important factor in the quality of the flowers in your shop. The second factor is clean. The reason that's so important is because one of the main reasons that flowers will die prematurely or not perform for you is because they get exposed to bacteria. It's important to understand that bacteria is everywhere and bacteria in bucket solutions or vase solutions will block the bottom of the stem, preventing the flower from being able to uptake either water or flower food solution. And once that happens, the flower will die earlier. And when it comes to, this is a key concept because if we can keep our bucket solutions, our buckets, containers cleaner, the solutions we use in them will be cleaner. That means that we can use those solutions for longer. You may or may not know, but commercial flower foods are designed to be used for about seven days. So if today you are disposing of your flower food solutions after each use, then you are probably uh, disposing of them earlier than you really need to. So, uh, and if you're disposing, say a bucket, if you fill it this in the morning and by the evening you've used it, you had stems in it, you sold those stems, so now you dispose of that solution, uh, then you're actually throwing out perfectly good uh, flower food, which you really don't have to, and you're disposing of the fresh water. 
So one of our suggestions for the industry is instead of doing that, uh, then properly dose your flower food on the first day, use it up to a week uh, or until uh, it gets cloudy. When the solution gets cloudy, uh, the reason it's getting cloudy is because you're seeing the growth of bacteria, uh, fungus, and other pathogens in the water, which will be hurting your flowers. So when it gets cloudy, at whatever point that is during the week, then dispose, clean the bucket, and start over again. But if it doesn't get cloudy, then the flower food is still working up to that week. And then you can, uh, at the end of the week, dispose of it, clean your bucket, and then refill with properly dosed flower food again. I think my experience is more, many shops in the industry uh, are not aware of this uh, because of their training or their experience in the past. So everyone generally rotates their flower food earlier than they probably need to. And this can be a key strategy to reducing the amount of our freshwater impact uh, uh, inside the industry. So we think it's a good practice. And on top of that, you save a little bit of money because you're using your flower food for longer, which means you're not dosing again, which means you're conserving your flower food investment. Uh, but there are some key, out, key ideas. One is you wanna always start with a clean bucket or vase. You wanna clean anything that comes in contact with your flowers, your cutters, your knives, your work surfaces, et cetera every day or more than once a day to remove any bacteria or kill any bacteria that are present or, uh, uh, on the surfaces. You also want to clean your cooler floors and walls weekly or monthly. Uh, and then any trash that you build up, you should dispose of it uh, every day, uh, at least every day or sooner if possible, because uh, it's a great place for bacteria and other pathogens to grow in which will then transfer to your flowers. And it's very important to use your cleaning solutions properly as well. So the main point is properly treated bucket solutions can last up to seven days. Uh, and uh, if we all use that strategy as an industry, we can reduce our impact on fresh water supplies. I would suggest that you experiment in your own shop on this idea and try to find the optimum time to change uh, your bucket solutions based on your own individual practices and kind of prove the concept to yourself as well. Uh, and you, different flower types may also have different uh, rotation in your shop in terms of how long the bucket solution can be used. And it's very important that you mix your flower food correctly. So we're talking about cleaning and disinfection to remove or kill bacteria. And this is an example. These are our products uh, for that use. Uh, our products are called VCD for disinfect, clean, and deodorize. Uh, our products are registered in the US, for example, with the EPA. And since we're in the pandemic, just so you know, they are approved for use against SARS-CoV-2, the novel coronavirus. And the kind of cleaner that we're using are hospital grade disinfectants. You should use them to clean your buckets, bases, counters, your tools, uh, any hard non-porous surface. Uh, they do kill bacteria and viruses. So in the pandemic, uh, you can use them. I'm sure everyone is concerned about safety for their employees and customers, and this can actually kill those viruses. Uh, and the major advantage of what uh, our chemistry is, is that it has a residual activity, meaning once you clean the surface properly and let it air dry, you do not need to go back and clean the surface with water. Actually, it's better if you let it air dry because the, uh, the ingredients will continue to kill any bacteria or pathogens they come in contact with even after it's dry and until your next cleaning. Uh, so you don't need to rinse with water uh, unless it's a food contact surface. So if you have a place where your employees are eating lunch, then clean that surface, kill any bacteria or virus that's there, 
But after you do that, then go back and just have, use a wet sponge or towel and wipe down the surface. And then uh, you can use it, uh, everyone can use it for their lunchtime. Also, our product uh, is not based around bleach, so it doesn't stain clothes uh, and it has a pleasant spell, uh, smell. And our cleaners are formulated to have their effective kill times uh, between five and 10 minutes, depending on the cleaner. So it's important that you follow that. Now we come to the third topic or the third step to reduce flour waste. Obviously, we do the first two things I talked about, but the third thing is we need to extend the life or optimize the life of the flowers in our post harvest as much as possible or while they're in our shops. So flowers need to hydrate, meaning they need to uh, be able to uptake the water and solution uh, that, we're, that they need to survive. Uh, they need a food source, which we'll get into. What, which is what a flower food provides. So what is in a flower food? Uh, you have every commercial flower food will have the food source, which is a sugar source. Uh, it'll have something to adjust the pH in the water because uh, flowers hydrate best at lower pHs. And it has something that will keep the base water clear or bucket solution clear. It's important to know that properly treated, meaning bucket and base solutions treated with flower food correctly will last longer than just plain water. So that's important. And the other thing you can do in the care step or this idea is there's lots of, we're talking about post-harvest treatments, but there are many ways that stems can get damaged uh, inside the flower shop. So just proper handling to prevent mechanical damage uh, is really important. So make sure that your employees are not throwing the flower boxes or roughly handling the flowers because they'll end up getting bruised, broken stems. I'm sure we all had that experience. It's very important that you measure your flower food correctly so that they can do what they need to do correctly. Uh, if you're a larger shop, you have more volume, then consider using a automatic dosing system. So you get accurate mixing and it's also saves time and labor. And finally, the retail florist is really the foundation of our industry in the sense that that is where the consumer is going to get their information and their love of flowers. And so one thing that uh, we can do as an industry is offer the consumer a sachet so that and explain to them when they take the flowers home, this is how you take care of them. And when the base water gets cloudy, you should take the flowers out, clean the base, mix your flower food using the sachet, and then you'll get better, longer base life, better uh, development of the flowers in the home. And that's really the only place that the consumer is going to get accurate care information and they already see the retail florist as the expert. And so they're very open to hearing that message from retail florists. So in the care, I said, I mentioned hydration. Uh, the reason, uh, so we need that stem to open up so that it can receive water. It can uptake, what we say is uptake the flower food or the solution uh, that we mix. And so it's important that especially with dry pack flowers, we clear the bottom of the stem of what's blocking it because there will be blockage there. Uh, and the blockage will be bacteria that has died and is clogging the bottom of the stem and exudates, which are things coming out of the flower itself. This idea applies to all flower varieties. Uh, this is an example. Quick Dip is our product for this hydration step at a retail florist. And it's very easy to use. It's a ready to use solution. You put it in a little vase or cup and you take the bottom of the stem and you place it in there for only one to three seconds. And that will clean the bottom of the stem. And then from there, you go and put it in your arrangement, in your vase with your flower food uh, solution. And it will significantly improve the stem's ability to hydrate. 
And be sure to recut your stems. Of course, everyone knows that. If you're not using an express type solution, which is our no cut stem solution. So there are several different types of flower foods and I'll cover two of them here. One is uh, what we call our 200 level uh, flower food solutions. You can see the image there. And it's a flower food that introduces a, what we call a medium level of sugar. And it's meant for the transport or storage phases of flowers. Uh, so that you don't, if you give it, uh, um, we're only giving a medium level because it's when you want to not overstimulate the flowers. You can use it at many points in the supply chain. It's great for shorter supply chains because the flowers are, uh, will be fresher and it can be used with all flower types. And it's important again to follow the directions and mix it correctly. Another type of flower food is what we call our 300 level product, which has the red outline on the label in our case. And this is a flower food solution that has the maximum amount of sugar for the flowers. So you would use this for consumer ready arrangements uh, when you want to right before you send it to the consumer and you when you want the flowers to fully develop and bloom. So we're giving them the maximum amount of sugar they need so that they really get stimulated, open up and the consumer gets that great color and development experience. And this is the type of product that you would find in any flower food session. Uh, I just wanted to mention uh, on this one that we do have a new product where because of our 2025 plan, we've actually worked to concentrate our flower food solution, our 300 products, the full sugar product, so that it's about, it's more than, uh, it's more concentrated, which means that you will, will have less plastic out in this market, in the supply chain, uh, because you get, we basically pack more inside uh, the bottle. So for the same volume, you get more than 50% more doses of flower food. So we think that will help to reduce carbon, our carbon footprint. Well, we know it does, it reduces our carbon footprint and uh, it will help to make our company and may help make the industry more sustainable. Two more things. Uh, one is there is a class of products called finishing sprays. Uh, and what this does is at the very end, when you have your final arrangement, these are products that you spray onto the final product before it goes, it's a last step before it goes to the consumer. And it gives the arrangement, uh, depending on the type of spray, some additional help in fully developing and in uh, uh, lasting longer, basically for the consumer. Uh, in our case, we have a product called Finishing Touch, uh, which you spray on the final arrangement, and it's best used when there is a water source for the flowers, uh, for example, an arrangement that someone will, a Valentine's Day rose vase arrangement that they'll set in their home, and they're hoping will last for many days. Uh, you want to be sure after spraying that if you spray, uh, let it dry before you put it back in the cooler. Uh, another one would be uh, something that uh, is for flower arrangements when you won't have a water source for them. And this would be, for example, a wedding bouquet is an example of that. So in this case, we have a product called Crowning Glory, which many people are familiar with in the United States. And this is used when it's best used when there's no water source for the arrangement, like in a wedding or, or a funeral, for example. And again, let it dry before storing in the cooler. So remember three things we can do, actions that we can take to be more sustainable is keep your flowers cold at the right temperatures to extend and maximize their vase life so we have less waste. Keep them clean so bacteria and other pathogens don't lead to premature death in your flowers and also to keep your employees uh, and, and your customers safe. And then care for your flowers, not only in how we handle them, but also in making sure we're using a proper flower food solution mixed properly uh, to extend their life 
So we end up having more time to use them and less waste.